Thanks for starting your week with us. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Lee Jiyun in Seoul. We have plenty of business stories lined up for you today, so let's first get started with a look at the day's highlights. A step forward in reforming the country's labor sector after months of negotiations, the government, management, and labor unions reach a tentative deal on labor reform. Following last week's rate freeze by the Bank of Korea, we take a closer look at what awaits the Korean economy now, ahead of a long-awaited interest rate decision from the U.S. These stories and more coming right up. After months of intense negotiations, we now have a tentative deal over Korea's labor reforms. As representatives from labor, management and the government hammered out a compromise on Sunday. Our Kim Min-jae has the story. Despite dismissals being a key dispute, the tripartite committee agreed in principle that companies should be allowed to sack poorly performing workers. But this is under the condition that the criteria and procedures must be worked out between experts and labor and management before any workers are laid off. Labor law currently stipulates that companies can terminate an employee's contract if they are involved in a corruption or an embezzlement case. As it stands, companies in serious financial difficulty are also able to dismiss underperforming workers. The three sides have decided to implement a fair assessment system and will decide on the conclusion and termination of contracts based on laws and legal precedents. The three sides also agreed to ease labor restrictions that require companies to gain an employee's consent before changing the terms of their employment. The government has said the easing of regulations was a necessary step to get private companies to implement a wage peak system, which will guarantee employment until retirement, but with lower wages after a specific age. The representatives agreed that such processes will only come after negotiations between labor and management and that the deal would prevent the government from unilaterally pushing ahead with reform. The agreement now awaits approval from the Federation of Korean Trade Unions to take effect. Kim min Business Daily. Cheap but quality Chinese products are threatening Korea's manufacturing sector. Manufacturers have seen profits drop to levels lower than what they saw during the 2008 global financial crisis. Our Connie Kim reports. Coming on the back of global economic slowdown and union conflict, Korea's manufacturing sector is on red alert. According to related industry reports on Monday, Korea's profitability among its top 30 business groups logged 48.9 billion U.S. dollars last year, lower than the 51.1 billion dollars recorded during the 2008 global financial crisis. The poor corporate report card is partly due to sluggish performance in China, Korea's main target market. Hyundai Motor Group maintained an average 10 percent market share last year, but this started dropping in May. This is mainly because Chinese local auto brands slashed prices while at the same time improving quality. Korea's tech giant Samsung Electronics also lost to its Chinese competitors in China in the second quarter this year. China's Xiaomi and Huawei took more than a third of the Chinese market, while Samsung held just 9 percent of the Chinese market. Domestic conditions aren't helping the manufacturing sector either. Unionized workers at Hyundai Motor Corporation voted to strike this month, lending support to their leaders in wage negotiations. And if the strike goes ahead, it'll be the fourth consecutive year of such strikes going ahead. Kumho Tire, whose management and labor unions are at loggerheads over wage issues, has been affected by strikes for over a month. Loss from the strike at Kumho is estimated to exceed $100 million. Experts say Korea is sandwiched between the foreign market and labor management conflict. There are growing calls for compromise between the two to provide a flexible labor market and allow corporate expansion and investment and employment. Connie Kim, Business Daily. Meanwhile, the global economy continues to suffer from the effects of the economic slowdown over in China. In fact, a number of leading economies have been contracting over the past couple of months amid falling raw material prices and global trade. And Korea is not immune to this. Our Han Dae-un tells us more. Is the world economy facing yet another economic recession? According to Bloomberg and other major global market indices, six nations, including Brazil, Canada, Japan and Russia, posted minus growth during the first and second quarter of this year. 
By region, the growth rate in Central and South America posted minus 0.1 percent and minus 1.1 percent in the first and second quarter, respectively. Eastern Europe posted growth of minus 0.5 percent in the second quarter. The EMEA, namely Europe, the Middle East, and African region, showed minus 0.2 percent growth. Last month, Moody's cut its 2015 growth forecast of G20 economies from 3.1 to 2.8 percent, while the International Monetary Fund has lowered its global growth forecast from 3.5 percent to 3.3 percent. The sluggish growth mainly stems from the contraction of global exports on the back of China's economic slowdown. It's so bad that the export volume of 67 major economies has plunged to the lowest level since the global financial crisis in 2008, and this is worrying news for Korea as the exports remain the country's strongest growth engine. Experts warn Korea's financial markets could also tumble due to capital outflow. Sluggish global growth is leading to widespread credit rating downgrades as well. Standard and Poor's has downgraded Brazil to junk status, while Moody's cut Russia's rating to BA1, a level considered junk, earlier this year. Fitch ratings downgraded Japan's credit rating one notch from A plus to A in April. The ratings for major resource exporters in Africa, including Ghana, Angola, and Congo, have also been cut. Han Dan, Business Daily. The market capitalization of Korea's 10 biggest conglomerates fell this year, despite a rise in the total value of the local market. Korea Exchange says the combined value of the nation's top 10 groups was 552 billion U.S. dollars as of last Thursday, down 9 percent from the end of last year. The sharp decline was driven by six of the 10 business groups. Market cap of Samsung Group, Korea's largest conglomerate, tumbled over 12 percent. Listed affiliates of steelmaker POSCO posted the biggest drop at nearly 30 percent. And the total market value of Korea's main bourse, the benchmark cost, be gained nearly 3 percent over the same period with the rise in value of small and mid-cap stocks. Let's now get a quick check on how the markets fared here in Seoul today. Korean shares ended lower on Monday as the market remained bearish with investors taking a wait-and-see approach ahead of a crucial U.S. Fed meeting later this week. At the closing bell, the benchmark Kospi was down a little over half a percent, finishing the day at 1931.46, while the tech-heavy Kosdaq also dropped by 1.04 percent to end at 662.88. The Korean won, meanwhile, gained ground against the Greenback ending at 1,183.11. From mini versions that capture video to massive ones used in disaster relief, drones are filling various roles, which are also becoming more diverse. As regulations catch up, an association committed to unmanned aerial vehicles has launched in pursuit of a safe drone culture here in Korea. Our Eunice Kim takes a look. It's able to maneuver around obstacles and fly without restrictions. From high-definition aerial filming, mountain rescue, military reconnaissance, to environmental monitoring, unmanned aerial vehicles are being used for a plethora of purposes, whether it be to access hard-to-reach areas or to stake out a long-term observation post. The government has identified the drone industry as an area of future growth, earmarking some $5 million into it next year. And in the private sector, a professional society committed to all things UAV has kicked off. We've launched this group to support a growing drone world to create a system in which unmanned aerial vehicles can be effectively applied and utilized in the field. Korea Drone Industry Association plans to create a platform by which information can be shared on UAVs and hold events that will raise the public's interest. It also says it will issue a dedicated magazine and develop a smartphone application that outlines the zones where users are allowed to fly their remote control aircrafts. The drone industry is poised only to grow with the world market projected to expand by 20 percent every year from $5 billion last year to $12.7 billion by the year 2023. Eunice Kim, Business Daily.
Korea's central bank froze its key interest rate for September, holding it steady for three straight months. The Bank of Korea said it's waiting to see whether the U.S. Fed Reserve carries out a rate hike this week and how conditions in China continue to unfold. For more, our Shin Se-min joins us in the studio today. Hello, Se-min. Hi, Chiyo. All right, so what do analysts say about the BOK's decision to, I guess, freeze the rate ahead of the crucial U.S. FOMC meeting this week? Yes, even before the announcement was made by Bank of Korea on Friday, many had said that the key rate should be kept as is for the time being. Now, and even without knowing which direction the Federal Reserve will take as of now, many say a rate freeze was the right move to make, but that down the line, uh, Seoul will have more variables to weigh. The Bank of Korea left its key interest rate unchanged at an all-time low of 1.5%. Friday's freeze underpinned the central bank's belief that the current rate is sufficient to support Korea's economic growth, while indicating it will take a wait-and-see approach in the face of heightened global uncertainties in the financial market. We are holding the rate so we can gauge potential economic shock waves that may stem from a U.S. Federal Reserve rate hike and volatilities in China's market. The top central banker added, however, that Korea's abundant foreign currency reserves and solid economic fundamentals can stave off any significant impacts that erupt from global volatility. But concerns still linger as a rate increase from the U.S. would likely trigger massive capital outflow from emerging markets. A U.S. rate hike combined with financial crisis in emerging markets could weaken Korea's economy, hampering growth down the line. Experts add that the speed of capital outflow from emerging markets, including Korea and China, will determine how grave a threat Seoul may actually face. The Fed rate hike itself is expected to have limited pressure on the BOK in determining when it will push up its rates. It's a misunderstanding that emerging markets, including Korea, need to follow the same monetary policies as those from the U.S. It is unlikely that the Korean government will pressure the BOK to raise its key rate. If the U.S. decides to carry out a rate liftoff, the BOK will likely hold things at tight levels. Considering existing issues like the country's mounting household debt and the vibrant housing market, the central bank needs to take some time to monitor the impact. Market watchers add that since the country's monetary policy can only control so much when it comes to the local currency and capital flows, the central bank should place more focus on domestic economic conditions and less on variables that present greater unpredictabilities. All right, so Simon, to address the elephant in the room, do we have a better idea of what kind of decision the U.S. Fed Reserve will be making this week? Opinions are still very much divided. Mm -hmm. The FOMC will meet to decide on whether they will carry out a rate hike on Thursday local time, so that's early Friday morning Korea time. And some are anticipating an actual hike following economic figures that say that see that they see as a silent go ahead for mm -hmm. a liftoff. But that's not the consensus. Exactly. At the same time, the IMF, the World Bank, and other investment banks have urged the Fed to postpone its hike, saying it'll only increase instead stability in the global um, financial market and with the possibility of China further devaluing its currency as the expert mentioned in the report the Fed may want to take into that account so it'll it may uh, postpone its rate hike all right then if it decides to push back the rate hike then would this encourage Korea to I guess carry out another rate cut good point many are wondering whether the BOK will cut its rate again before the year ends but experts say that there are limits when it comes to propping up the economy with solely monetary measures. In order to support the country's economy, both monetary and fiscal policies should work hand in hand. From how I see it, the BOK has done its duty in lowering the rate enough to stimulate consumer spending and the local housing market. The expert added that if the BOK um, does lower its rate even further, mm -hmm. Seoul will need to come up with its contingency plan to uh, counter or to handle the growing household debt because mm -hmm. eventually a further rate cut would only mean a growing uh, debt level for the country. All right, so a lot of these decisions will obviously be made after the U.S. FOMC meeting this Thursday, right? That's right. All right, thank you so much for coming in today, Samin. My pleasure.
All right, that wraps it up for today. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time, same place. So don't forget to tune in then. Thanks for watching and have a great day.